Good morning, and welcome to another installment of Weapons Wednesday from the National Museum of the Marine Corps. My name is Bruce Allen, one of the museum specialists here. Today I'm going to be presenting an artifact that's near and dear to my heart as I shoot Civil War firearms in competition. And I, my first love is antiques. This is the Lamet revolver. What makes this one especially special is this is serial number one Lamet revolver. Now this style got, uh, firearm was designed by a Creole physician, Dr. Jean-Alexander Francois Lamat. He received the patent uh, for this on tw 21st of October, 1956. Now what makes this especially unusual is most revolvers of the time period are, were capable of six shots. This one has nine shots in the cylinder plus a 16 gauge shotgun underneath. Now only 450 examples of this first model were produced. Some of the special features of it are the finger spur on the trigger guard, the lanyard swivel on the butt, engravings on the cylinder, engravings on the barrel, which is also goes from octagonal to round. Now this is a cap and ball revolver, meaning that it would use, at the time period, they would have been issued a paper cartridge which held the powder in the projectile, and then a percussion cap would have to be put on each nipple. And it would, this would have fired the exact same way as any other, with one difference. To fire the shotgun, you would pull the hammer back and flip down that switch, and that would detonate the 16-gauge shotgun. The only problem being is that, that was a weak spot in the gun, and those were, had a tendency to break. These were initially produced by Charles Girard and Company in Liege, Belgium in 1861. Later models were produced in Paris, France and London, England. Dr. Lamatt used his connection with his brother-in-law, PGT Beauregard, to secure Confederate contracts. Now, in order to load this, you would place your paper cartridge in the cylinder and then press it home with the loading lever. This loading lever has an additional function in that it holds the ramrod in order to load the 20 gauge shotgun. Excuse me, the 16 gauge shotgun. One of the other nice features of this revolver was its ease to break down for cleaning. You would simply unlock it, unscrew the barrel, remove that, and the cylinder comes right out. Now it's ready for cleaning which is very important for any black power fighter, firearm as the black powder is fairly dirty and it can lock up the mechanism if it's not properly taken care of. <clears throat> now, this example was donated to the museum by retired Marine Major Charles Stansberg in 1959. There we go. <laughs> yes, even antiques can be problematic at times. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about this particular firearm and I've been able to spread my joy of antiques to you. For more information on the Arms and Armor section and other fascinating artifacts at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, please check out our social media pages.